Hi guys and girls, we're back in David's story again. And this week's lesson is called Merciful. If you don't know what mercy is, mercy um, is not getting the punishment that you deserve. So we as Christians, we know that the punishment of sin is death. But instead of death, God gives us eternal life with him in heaven forever. Now that is mercy, not getting the punishment that you actually deserve. I'm sure you guys can think of some other examples of mercy between you and your parents, you and friends. Um, but in this week's part of the David story, we will see that David had a chance to finally get rid of Saul. Saul has been such a problem, guys. Like, yo, Saul is such an issue. <laughs> so David has a chance to get rid of Saul and finally become king. But instead, David doesn't get rid of him. Instead, he trusts God and that God will make him king at the right time. So can you guys remember from last week's lesson how Saul felt about David? Saul was super angry at David and was actually afraid of him. Saul wanted to get rid of David. Now, before we start our lesson, let us play a quick round of wait or not to wait. Okay, so I've got a list of things and I want you guys to help me sort them out into the wait box or the not to wait box. Okay, so the first thing is who can wait to go back to school? It's a tricky one, hey? If I asked this question two years ago, some of you might have said wait. But it's been locked down. It's been a long time. You miss your friends. You miss your teachers. So I'm going to go with cannot wait. How about Christmas? Who can wait for Christmas? Cannot wait. How about biscuits baking in an oven? Cannot wait. <laughs> How about writing a maths test? Definitely can wait. How about cleaning your room? Definitely can wait. And your birthday? Definitely can't wait. I love birthday and love cakes. Mm. So you guys see that there's some things that you can wait for and other things that you just can't. We're going to see in today's story that David was waiting for something, but it was really, really, really hard. So in today's lesson, I need you guys to listen out to the answers of some questions. Okay. The first question is, what was David waiting to do? The second question is, what could he have done instead? The third question is, why didn't he do this? Okay. So I want to see at the end of the lesson, you can answer these questions. All right. So do you guys remember from the very, very first lesson in David that God was the chosen king? He was the one that God picked to look over the kingdom, to watch over the people, and to be the king, right? But Saul is still holding onto the throne, still holding onto the king, and he is still ruling over Israel. See, Saul was very, very jealous of David, and he'd already tried to kill him. So David is running away. So... Today's reading comes from 1 Samuel chapter 24 verses 1 to 22 and 1 Samuel chapter 26 verses 1 to 25. Okay, I want you guys to pause this video and to have a read with your family because it's going to be really, really cool if you come into the lesson knowing exactly what's happening. So pause the video, read those chapters with your family and pick who's David, pick who's Saul, have it animated, make it come alive and then we'll get back into the story. Okay. And now this week's story from the Bible begins with David in hiding and Saul looking for him. David was hiding in a cave with his men and Saul didn't know David was in this cave. So while Saul and his men are looking for David, he needs to relieve himself. And they walk past this cave. And so David and his men are quietly in the cave and Saul decides to use the cave to go relieve himself. Now relieve yourself is a very fancy grown up way of saying he needed the toilet. <laughs> so Saul needs to go to the toilet and he goes into this deep dark cave all by himself with David's men inside. David's men spot Saul and say, David, this is your chance, kill him. So David goes on his tippy toes and creeps quietly until he's right up close to Saul and he doesn't kill him. <laughs> Instead of killing him, David cuts off a piece of his robe and lets Saul carry on. So he lets Saul do his business. Saul then walks up the cave. And David follows Saul and shouts out, my Lord, my King. And Saul looked back at him and David bowed down with his face to the ground and said, why do you listen to people who keep saying that I want to harm you? I could have killed you in the cave, but I didn't. I cut off a piece of your robe instead. Now David wanted Saul to know that he was a good guy, who didn't want to cause Saul any harm. And so Saul had no reason to hunt David and no reason to hurt him. Saul knew, after this conversation with David, that he had actually wronged David. 
and he then asks David to not harm his family or himself when he becomes king. They both agree and off they go. Now we come to 1 Samuel chapter 26 and find out that Saul didn't stop hunting David. The Saul guy is a problem, hey? Sure. So Saul hears that David is hiding somewhere and he goes out to find him, takes his big army and they go and look for David. And they look and they look and they look and they get tired and they decide to stop and have a rest. Now David and one of his men called Abishai went into the camp where they were all resting and found Saul fast asleep and probably snoring. <laughs> And this was another chance for David to kill Saul. But instead of killing him, David took Saul's spear and a water jug, which was right next to his head, and left the camp. Crossed over to the other side and stood on top of a hill and called out to a man who was supposed to be looking after the king. David asked him, where are the king's jug and spear? Saul heard David and woke up. And he knew that David could have killed him. This again made Saul realize that David was not a baddie. <laughs> David then gives Saul's spear back to him and his water jack, and they both go on their separate ways. Now, do you guys think that this was the end of David's problem? Guess you'll have to come back to find out what happens. <laughs> now, in today's story, can you guys tell me, do you think Saul is a guy that can be trusted to keep his word? And what about David? Do you think David is a guy that can be trusted to keep his word? Now remember, Saul had already broken his promise twice. What do you think David should do the next time Saul breaks his promise? Now keep in mind, David trusts God. And this is why he doesn't kill Saul. He knew that God would make him king at the right time, at God's time, not his own. David is waiting patiently on God to sit him on the throne and make him king. But it was long and it was really, really difficult, but David still waited. We can learn so, so much about Saul and David in the story. Saul is a failed king who was rejected by God, and David was a chosen king who was promised the throne by God. Saul couldn't be trusted to keep his word, David could be trusted and he did keep his word. Saul spent most of his life ignoring God and didn't listen to him. David trusted God and never took things into his own hands, like killing Saul when he had the chance. Now think for a moment. Who does David remind you of? Someone who God has chosen to be king. Someone who is patient, even though it's really, really hard. Someone who listens to God, someone who trusts in God, someone who never took matters into his own hands, but trusted that God will do what God said he would do. Drum roll, please. The answer is Jesus. Jesus is that guy. Jesus always trusted that his father was in control. Now, guys and girls, I know sometimes it can be super hard following a leader, a king, who no one can see. And that some people laugh at, make fun of, some people don't even like him. Now, how does this story about David help us to trust God when people are really nasty about who Jesus is and us following him? What will happen to people like Saul who try to ignore God and his chosen king? Now, guys and girls, God, guys and girls, <laughs> God has the power to keep all of his promises. And you can look forward to the day where his promises are realized as true, where people can actually see that God's promises were the true ones. And that is going to be a super exciting day for all the people who listen to him and follow him. Let's bow our heads and pray. Thank you, God, that you are in control of all things, all of the time. Please help us to trust you and trust that you will do what you promised. Amen. Now, if you are like me, I hope you're not like me, <laughs> and that you've been learning your memory verse. I haven't learned it, but I'm telling you guys, in a couple of weeks' time, I'm going to know it completely off by heart, and I'm going to show you. But the memory verse has been coming from 1 Samuel chapter 16, and the second part of verse 7. And it says, la, 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 la. Okay, let's try that again. 
<laughs> it says, the Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. That is an incredible memory verse to be learning. I hope you guys are learning it and teaching it to your family and friends. It's an incredible reminder of who God is. Um, and it's just something to be really, really excited about. It's been great learning about David um, uh, this week with you. Um, and I'm really excited to continue learning about what's happening in the David story and what Jesus, what God has in store for us.